I bought the fiberglass two door panels now. It's going in a 1996 Impala. It going with three six and a halves, I think. Yeah, three six and a halves and one tweeter. PRVs. But I think I'm gonna put one six and a half here, one here, then probably one here and the tweeter there. I got my wood over here where I'm gonna cut my speaker rings out of. This here is 1532. The size of it. The other door panel over there. Let me get started cutting these rings out and I'm gonna cut you back on. Okay, I got everything set up to be cutting my speaker rings. Sometimes the speakers come with a template, but this one here don't. It just come with this little box with the speaker sitting down there. But I could use this inner circle. I could use it, but I'm gonna have to make me an outer circle. So the quickest way to do it is just turn your speaker over and just trace around the speaker. That'll be your outer circle. And then, once you cut that out, you can use this for your inner circle. I had went on and got me some scissors and cut this inner circle out the cardboard just enough where I can sit it inside my outer circle so I can mark it. Something like that. Then you just draw around the inner circle. Just like that. Then you're gonna get your drill and just drill your pilot hole. jigsaw and go ahead and cut this out the inner circle out because you want to cut it out now because you don't want to cut your outer circle out first because it's going to be kind of hard to keep the wood in place so you want to cut your inner circle out first if you got the inner circle cut out you want to make sure your speaker sit down in it okay once you get that done you can go ahead and cut your outer circle out got one of my speaker rings now I gotta make um, six of these then I gotta do my tweeter same way I'm just going to set it like this and retrace it until I get six of them. I got all my speaker rings cut out. I got six, six and a halves, and two tweeters. I'm going to bring my panel up here and get it set up. I think I'm going to have it set up like this. I'm going to have one six and a half here, one there, one here, and a tweeter there. But when you're doing this, you got to take in consideration the depth. You got to be able to clear the magnet. So I'm going to have to build it up somewhere like this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out here. Along here so I can set it up. I'm going to cut it out with this drummer. Sawmax. I removed the light and the armrest. You want to make sure your speaker clear now. Because you don't want to cut into the actual door itself. So once you got the clearance, you want to uh, get you some paint stirring sticks. I'm going to use these for legs. I'm going to cut it in half and use them for legs to hold up my... Hold up my speaker rings. I'm gonna hot glue it together. 
with a hot glue gun. I got my legs hot glued on to my speaker rings. I went on and made some exact size for the other door panel. But this is how I got it. It's going to sit down and up like that. Then you can just hot glue the bottom to the bottom of your door panel. And move on to the next speaker. I got both doors finished. I got the speaker rings all set up in place where I wanted them. I could have actually cut one piece of wood for this whole piece, but I didn't really know how I was going to have it laid out. That's why I cut it in singles. But it would have been a lot easier if I would have cut the whole piece out. But I connected this tweet onto that one. The next step is putting the fleece over it. It's some pretty thin fleece. But I'm
because it's easy to work with. If you try to lay a whole piece down on these curves, you tend to get air bubbles up on that. Let me mix up some resin and I'm gonna cut you back on. What I'm gonna do is just wet the second layer up. Then you can grab your piece of fiberglass mat, lay it down like that. Then you come back over it with some more resin. Just keep dabbing it like that though. Get the air bubbles out. We're gonna do this along the whole piece until it's covered. This is what it's looking like now. I just got to come back and fill in all the spots that ain't got fiberglass. I'm going to overlap the pieces and make it stronger. It's coming on along now. It's like a puzzle. You just got to keep piecing in the spots. Got a few more spots to fill in. I also went on to staple around my speaker rings. The reason why I didn't do it earlier because the little legs I had made, they was real flimsy and I didn't want to knock it out of place. So once I put that first coat of resin, it kind of hardened everything up. Then I went on to staple it. Just got through knocking both panels down with the DA. Once you get through knocking it down with the DA, you want to blow it off real good. And then you want to look for some air pockets. I think this panel here pretty good. I don't see no air pockets. But on this one here, I see a couple of them. The air pockets going to be these little spots here. Some of them are pretty deep, so I ain't going to worry about it. But if you see some on the surface, what you want to do is get you a box cutter and open it on up so you can get some fill in it. Or rondo. What I was knocking it down with was this DA here. This electric quarter cable. I mostly use this on all my jobs. But if you got a big enough compressor, you can use a, a dyno braid 
to run by air. But I'm gonna mix up some rondo. And rondo consists of resin and body filler. You can also use bundle glass. It's just fiberglass filler. Short strain. Fiberglass hairs in it. But I got a video on that if you want to see how to mix it up. But I'm gonna mix up some, then I'm gonna spread it on both panels. I got a chip brush and got my rondo. Rondo is a brushable filler. Instead of trying to spread it on with a spreader, you can just brush it on. It go a lot faster. It also self level itself. So I'm finna go on and spread all these on both panels. I'm gonna cut you back on. Once you get through brushing the panel with Rondo, go ahead and get them drips. It's going to drip along the sides. I usually just take the brush and hit it. It's a lot easier doing it now than waiting, waiting for it to harden up. Rondo is dry now. This is what I was talking about. Those drips. Ain't too many of them though. It's gonna be the same process using the DA. Knocking this down. You don't wanna knock it down too far. You just wanna knock it down just enough so you can hand sand it. To make the sand in a lot easier knocking it down with the DA first let's get that started I'm finishing up on my final sand right before primer I'm doubling my ends off by hand which it don't really matter because it ain't gonna be seen once you put the speakers in but I like to give it a smooth look for paint like here I'm just beveling it off I also took the masking off because I had to bevel my ends off where my fiberglass gonna meet to the original panel after this sand here it's gonna be primer Both door panels prepped for 2K primer. I went on and retaped everything to get a smooth paint line. I'm gonna be spraying my 2K primer at this Jet 1000 BRP. This first coat of primer is just for me to find all my imperfections. Then once that dry, I'm gonna fix my imperfections. Then I'm gonna move on to the second coat.
this two coats of 2k primer my next step is finding all my pinholes and my imperfections you can see some imperfections here pinholes I'm gonna have to round my edges off I'm just gonna have to round everything off this blocked off I see a few imperfections here but this is what I'm gonna use here some glazing and spot putting this here made by Bundo this here made by USC they got other brands you could use but you can get this here at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, AutoZone it's your choice about to be a wrap on this door panel here with the spot putty I went on to use this here the USC instead of the bundle but I sprayed it some up in here with my finger just to give it that look that nice clean look like I said before this here ain't gonna be seen but I just wanted to give it that look Once the glazing put it dry, it's time to move on to the next step. It don't take long for this glazing putter to dry. The next step is sanding this glazing putter. I got a block, then I got some 180. I'm just going to re-sand the whole panel and the glazing putter. Get it smooth as I can so I can shoot my next coat of primer. I think this is going to be the last coat of primer here because I think I can get it smooth for paint after this. I found a few more little imperfections that I wanted to hit before I do my final prime. I use this Bundo red glaze and put it this time. It's sand a lot easier than the other glaze and put it. But let me go ahead and sign this, then I'll be ready to prime it again.
Right from the bottom to the top, from the ground up, we right never stop. Right from the bottom.